Can you tell me when things began to escalate? We had been in Godric's Hollow for a month. It was October, and all our furniture had arrived. We were unpacked, and we finally felt like it was our home. I had a lot of framed photographs around, mostly of James's family and my parents. My sister and I don't get on. And, of course, dozens of photographs of Harry through the years. The funny thing was... Photographs started falling off the walls and fireplace mantle, but only photographs of Harry. The glass would shatter like it had been dropped from the roof onto concrete, instead of just the two or three feet from its place to the carpeted floor. My husband guessed maybe the frames were too old, or nails sunk into the drywall. He just brushed it off like he always did. It was time for Harry to return to primary school, and I was looking for work. Harry was distraught about leaving his friend, and I told Harry to just bring his friend with him to school, and Harry said he couldn't. Harry had never been one to kick up a fuss about going to school, but he was beside himself the whole walk there. I was quite embarrassed, dragging my child, kicking and screaming all the way to the front gates. I felt like a horrible mother. When I returned home, I took out my laptop and resumed my job hunt, and I'd been at it for maybe ten minutes when I heard a child's giggle. I stood up, and I heard the soft sound of someone running down the hall towards the bedrooms. I went to see what it was, but I couldn't find anything. When I returned to the front room... (laughs) Mrs. Potter, tell me, what happened next? All our photographs, all of them, they were on the walls like, like normal. But our faces, mine, James's, every family member had been scratched out except Harry. When, when James got home, he thought I'd done it. And I told him I hadn't, and he didn't believe me. We had a horrible row, and we never fight. I was just glad Harry was still at school and and he didn't hear it. (laughs) Tell me what happened next. That night, we went to bed. and Harry asked us where the pictures went. I can't remember what we told him, that, that they were being cleaned or something like that. And all was quiet when I heard the tapping on my window. Same kind of tapping that you heard the first night? No, it was different. This was harder, and sounded like someone knocking on my window. Three times. Just like before. It woke me up and I rushed to the window, but there was nothing there. I took out my mobile and snapped a picture of the window. I don't know why. I just had to. But I couldn't look at it. I I just went back to bed and tried to get some sleep. Did you ever look at the photograph that you took? Yes. The next morning, James insisted on taking Harry to school... And he kept giving me this look, like something wasn't quite right with me. I think he thought I was losing my mind or something, but after they left, I pulled out my mobile and I remembered that I'd snapped a photo and and it was there. A figure, sort of, shapeless, like black fog. But I could see the street lamps glow beyond the figure, like a silhouette. But there was no way someone could be standing in front of our window. It's on the second floor, and there's nothing they could have hung on to. I was terrified of being in the house alone, so I took my laptop, took our other car, and drove to the cafe in the village, and I spent the day there. Were you job searching all day? No. I was looking for someone who could help me. Someone who would believe me. I was afraid that I might lose my family. Whatever was in that house... It was evil. There was no other word for it. Evil. That evening, after Harry had been put to bed, I told James I wanted to have a psychic come to see the house. My husband was a practical man. He didn't believe in such things, so of course he got very upset, told me he wouldn't waste his money on something like that, and he insisted that I see a therapist. He was concerned that being alone so much was making me delusional. Did the therapist help at all? 
<laughs> no, how could they? A therapist doesn't cure a haunting. But I went to keep James from nagging me, and he was getting worried about leaving me alone with Harry, and threatened to take him to his parents' house when he wasn't there, and I... He's my son. I'd never hurt him. I loved him. I went to the therapist on the condition that we have a psychic come to see the house. He finally agreed. How did you find a psychic that was reputable? Uh, I'd imagine many of them are frauds. Many are. I found this one who came highly recommended. She worked with several New Age shops across southern England, hosting workshops on divination and the like. Sybil Trelawney. Did Mrs. Trelawney help at all? Ease your fears? James was very reluctant to have Harry around someone who claimed to be a psychic, so we had her by while Harry was at school. She said that there was indeed a spirit in the house. She said it was a child. But so much isolation had made it malevolent. It wanted a playmate. It wanted Harry. She... She said nothing would be a permanent solution unless we discovered who the spirit was and what it was attached to. What was holding it to this plane of existence? She burned some herbs and nailed sprigs of rosemary above all the doorways. After she left, James ripped it all down before I could say a word and complained about it being a waste of money and told me I wasn't to call on her again. And did any of what Miss Trelawney do help at all? No. If anything, things got worse. 